right, everybody, welcome to the Gay Freaks Podcast. Uh, we're going to do something a little different today. We're going to start a new show called Push to Talk. And Push to Talk is going to be our series. We're going to try to do it bi-weekly, but maybe when we get heat in the moment, maybe we'll do it weekly. You never know what we're going to do, right? So what Push to Talk is going to be for the Geek Freaks is a, a kind of like a rambling thoughts, what we're really thinking about, about uh, current events in the pop culture world or if something happened that uh, was brand new and we want to say some news that just popped up we want to talk about it so uh you could call it just the a ramble show why not well, well so can i throw in something like i know i'm already interviewing yeah. you on your shit but yeah no go ahead. um i like to think of this kind of show is kind of like we'll tell you the news every week kind of thing like we normally do let's say we want to talk about like comics gate or uh yeah. women representation in video games or something like that like something like the the longer story probably a good place yeah. to just bullshit about it you know yeah, and I think to dive deeper down into our sometimes long episodes about the news, uh, and we could just kind of focus on one thing and uh, um, get more uh, landscape to it. I'm excited. Um, but I, what I'm kind of thinking about for the show is I think we'll open up with some random uh, uh, fun questions, and and uh, we'll kind of build from there. But really, I would like to have, or would like to see for us, if we could stay on pace, because we're really just going to be talking about however we feel about whatever our topic. We're going to have one main topic for the show. And like I said, hopefully we can stay on course. So uh, today's main topic is going to be what are uh, games through each generation that we played through that really hit home for us. Now, it's, it doesn't have to be the big block, big blockbuster one. It could be just random gym uh, that you pulled out of a, I don't know why gyms are in haystacks, but a random gym in a haystack. <laughs> so. Well, that's a new saying. You didn't, I don't know if you knew this, but that's 2021's new saying. Of the year. You oh. caught it right away. That's a good job. Wow. <laughs> Another thing, too, is, right. is I'm here now, but I, I won't always be the guy joining you. I'm just the guy with the free schedule. But it'll be rotating True. co-hosts with you and stuff like that. It's, it's going to be fun. Yeah. So I'm going to open this up to everyone. We'll get uh, maybe people that you, we never even had on the podcast before. Uh, maybe a bigger group of us, because why not? The more different opinions, just the bullshit about a topic, uh, you know, the funner it'll be. I like it. Um, so, yes, as you can see, today I'm joined with Frank. Uh, and then uh, I say let's kick it off with our uh, first new episode of the series. So. Woot woot. That was old school. Now, uh, I felt very lame saying woot woot right there. I'm sorry, guys. <laughs> so, uh, Frank, you're yes, the man sir. with the questions. Yes, so, let's, uh, let's, open <laughs> let's open this. Let's open this up to maybe up to maybe like two questions. Let's see. This, by the way, I just want to make sure we, we throw this out there. This is from the Table Topics set. They're a really cool company. They give like the big hard plastic cases. There's also Pod Deck, which I probably will be talking to them soon. They just followed us on Twitter recently um, and probably checking out their card sets. But if you guys want to do these at home or whatever, Table Topics. Really cool. They're not sponsoring us. Just we like to use them a lot on the stream. So it's always good to kind of give them a shout out. No, we're not. Yeah. Here's our first one. If you were given the option, would you become a vampire? Oh, 100%. <laughs> yes. That's so. Uh, one, a huge fan of all the universal monsters, uh, that there are. Dracula is one of my, it's my favorite of all of them. Mm -hmm. Uh, also the second thing what's really killing me is that playing World of Warcraft, the Raven, the Raven, I'm always going to say the name wrong. Yeah. You I'm so definitely bad at are, saying the yeah. names. Revendreth. I don't think I've said, yeah, I don't think I've said that name once yet since no. this, since I even know. before the expansion came out. <laughs> you always talk to I me always... about them and I'm like, I love the Ravens. I'm like, yeah, I know, <laughs> but we're not talking football, you know, Revendreth. <laughs> oh man. But it's upsetting that I'm not joining that covenant just for that Castlevania feel. Well, really. you're not you're not like a mythic raider. Why don't you just fuck around? Who cares? Have fun. No, dude. No, I I will be a um, what do you call it? Uh, mythic dungeon runner. Uh, I'm telling you right now, <laughs> you pick whatever looks cool. Okay, the day you actually become a mythic dungeon runner, like you're calling it, or you know, you're running <laughs> keys, then we'll worry about it. But I think right now you just I, pick whatever looks neat. I I will make you proud of me. Okay. Okay, well, you've already made me. Oh, guys, here's here's the emotional part. You've <laughs> already made me proud of you. Aww. I'll put because in the aw sound level. effects right there. I'm telling the editor Frank, editor Frank, put an aw right there. <laughs> um, but you know what? Though? I'm Team Edward too on Twilight. Let's just I'm bring team, it up. Whoa. Okay. Well, we're done. I'm Team Jacob all day, every day. Jacob okay, well, was this, the better this... for. Her. Okay, this show's not going to last much longer. I can tell you right now. <laughs> First off, let's get down to it. I'm going to be. Guys, this is press. This is something you don't get on News of the Week or Level Up or the other two episodes that are coming from the future. We won't talk about those right now. Uh, Edward was a bit of a pedo. I'm going to tell you why. He was alive for how many years? 
So mentally, he's not a teenager, and yet he's going to high school dating a teen. Yeah. You're yeah. getting women in their prime. Okay. No, we call that <laughs> statutory. We don't call it in their prime. <laughs> hey, but if you're stuck if you're stuck in that look, uh, I guess why would you go to high school really anymore anyway? But anyway, Jacob was a little bitch because all he was doing was whining, whining, whining. He's like he's obviously the far Edward's obviously the far superior person in combat. Let's say super faster, jumping all over the place, trees, forest, whatever, going everywhere. I mean, he's contained his powers to just animals, so it's like when he gets that flesh from a human, he's balls through the wall, you know? Castlevania final boss. Okay, I haven't seen the last movie, so I can't really, you know, I'm going off the baseball game, essentially. Um, <laughs> no. And so, <laughs> okay. I still think wolves can catch the ball better. I, I, I think the wolves all day. I, I, you know, whatever. I think they've got cooler tribe, or like, you know, like they're like this like tight-knit clan when... Uh, the Colons, I think the last name was, if I remember saying. Yeah, yeah, okay. you're right. They were kind of like this loose fit family that kind of doesn't really make a lot of sense. Like, wow, you guys are a little all too handsome and what the hell are you guys all doing or whatever. When the other ones were just like a close-knit family bonding situation, I really liked the way that their family worked. I don't know, whatever. Team Jacob, you're not going to convince me. I wish I was in the handsome family. Now, okay, so... How did we get on? Oh, yeah, base- you want to be a vampire, yeah. Yeah, so they're playing baseball. Do they have to be wolves when they play baseball? Well, if you want, like, I would like to see something where, like, okay, it's a fly, fly ball or whatever. So you have to run really far. So, like, I'm not going to make it on two legs. I'll jump on four. Boom. Mm. They catch it like a dog playing fetch. And I'll mm. hopefully bring it back. My dog, a little shaky on that. But hopefully they bring it back. Yeah, but then they'll probably tear up the ball. So how many balls does the Colons need to bring every time they play baseball? They're rich. Let them buy the balls. They'll go to Walmart, pick up a pack. Oh, that's fine. <laughs> yeah, no, totally. Now, what would you become a vampire? Would I become a vampire? Yeah. Yeah, that's a tough one. Probably yes. I'm a night owl, anyways. And uh, the the feasting. I know we keep going to the. I don't want to go to Twilight all the time because there is a part of like you have to feast on people. I really like vampire mm-hmm. or interview with a vampire. That version of vampire, like mm. that's a problem. Always having to eat people. So, I mean, you can have the rats, but that doesn't sound great. You know. Yeah. Yeah. Imitation blood. You know. Unfortunately, I still haven't finished it, but I actually started watching that movie like a month ago. Oh, yeah, it's a good movie. I've never, I read the book never too. seen that movie. Yeah, yeah. I've never seen that movie, but it was really good so far. Yeah, man. Um, uh, Brad, Brad Pitt, right? Brad, Brad Pitt, Pitt, Tom Cruise, and Tom and Cruise. Yeah, Kristen Dunst. Right. I like them next to uh, with each other. Yeah, yeah, it's good. Yeah. And Antonio Banderas, if you get further in the movie. Yeah, I don't think I've seen him yet. No, no, I got to finally finish it. I kind of forgot about that movie then. Just fell off this. Started watching everything else. Star yeah. Trek mostly. I've been on a Star Trek spree. It's a good. Hey, that's a good reason to fall off. <sighs> I know. I haven't started uh, the Voyager episodes yet uh, because I just w- watched the newest episode of Discovery. <laughs> okay, that's good. Actually, I'm behind by and, one. But yeah. Wow. Who would have thought the day that uh, myself is farther than a Star Trek series? Than you? <laughs> I know. I know. Uh, but then um, I'm on episode eight, no, seven or eight of Picard. So I'm like, I should just kill this thing real quick because it. There's only 10, I believe. Just so. Yeah, burn that up. So just so you guys know, uh, he asked for episodes of Voyager that he should watch. So me mm-hmm. and Jonathan, the two Star Trek guys, uh, came together, kind of worked on a list of our, I would say, top five new to Star Trek guys and gave him the list. So hopefully he'll watch those, kind of give us his feedback on episodes and see how they how they worked out. Yeah. 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 <laughs> um, now, if you're a vampire, what would your style be? My style. Okay. Like clothing yes, style yes. or like my, what do you mean by style? Clothing, clothing style? style. Yeah. Clothing style. What kind of vampire do you envision yourself? I, I Legit. I would wear the same thing I wear now. Star Wars <laughs> t-shirts. Um, I like blue jeans. I don't know. I don't understand why I wouldn't be the same. I don't know. I feel like uh, I would definitely go for the, because um, I really like Phantom of the Opera, that really elegant look in the Castlevania. Has it an interview with a vampire, really? I think I would switch my style up like that. Match it. See, here's the thing. I think if you're going to be immortal, <laughs> you're going to be like living through the launch of Star Wars. You're going to be living through mm. NASA landing on the moon. So you are even more so a fan of geek stuff like that. Because it's like, mm. I love wearing a good NASA shirt. Just because NASA's freaking awesome, you know? And yeah. But if I was there to watch the moon landing, oh, you bet your ass I'm wearing a NASA shirt. If I was there <laughs> at the, you know, the launch of the new Star Wars, like in 77 and stuff like that, yeah, mm. I'm gonna have I'm gonna have an original shirt, stuff like that. I think I would yeah. even be more of a geek. 
That's pretty. Uh, that's good. Using your vampire immortality for pop culture. Yeah. Would you have yeah. a podcast as a vampire? I think. I think I would. I think I would because you could definitely talk about your past experiences. But then yeah. it'd be weird because like, hold on, how the fuck is this guy still look like he's oh, going yeah. to high school? You gotta kind of like be openly a vampire to be have a podcast, probably. Ooh. I'm but just that's thinking. The of, thing. People. Good. No, go ahead. Go ahead. Well, I just want to say the motto would be like, "This podcast sucks." Huh? Oh, look <laughs> at your face. That, that doesn't do good for podcasts. You got to make sure to like be verbal, ver- verbally excited about that. But then while you're kind of like advertising your vampire, they'll be like, "Oh yeah, sure, you are okay." And then you're like, "Okay, well, if you don't believe me, you don't believe me." Hey, half a. Hey, I listen to a lot of murder podcasts. Half that stuff's about not knowing who the killer is. So the whole time they're just like, is he? A, well, he does have a lot of details about 1893. I don't mm. know. <laughs> oh, shit. That's good. All right. Yeah. What's the, what's the next question? Next card. Go. Here we Let's go. This. Jedi or Sith? There's only one correct answer on this one. Jedi oh, Sith, or Sith. Yeah. Next. Yeah. Wow. That was super it. fast. It is totally <laughs> Sith. Um, okay. But let's just say why. Why would you be a, okay. a Sith over a Jedi? Hmm, man. You know what? Star Wars, and there wasn't really no re- re- reason when I first started watching Star Wars. Star Wars is the first series series that I've ever liked a villain more than I liked the, um, any of the good guys. Okay. Um, and I think a lot of that was because of um, uh, Darth Vader. Okay. Um, and I, I think I just fell in love with Darth Vader so much that I just stuck with it. So I think they have a lot of... Uh, uh, cool villains. I wish they would kind of expand those roles, but they're always with the you know they always do good guy shit. Because I would love to see more of the Count Dooku. Um, I like Count Dooku. Yeah, I like yeah, his, his like. saber style. is really cool. Yeah, I wish uh they could kind of go into uh, more of the game lore. But I know that Disney's not picking up on the lore of the games, right? Like from the way back then of like uh Knights uh Knights they, of the Republic. I think they have brought in uh, Darth Revan. But I don't think they've really okay. accepted everything yet. They need to, because Knights of the Old Republic is, you know, almost flawless. Go for it. Why would you not? You know, it's just crazy. It's just out there. Yeah. But they, but by the way, guys, uh, I don't know when we're releasing this episode. We need to talk about that. But um, on the 6th of January, the first High Republic is out. I am at my comic book shop in the morning to pick it up. What? I'm going full on High Republic. It's going to be it's gonna be a comic book is the first thing that's going to be coming out for it? Right. There's going to be books okay. and comic books and TV shows yeah. and stuff like that. And, you know, we know of the Acolyte will also be in that world. Uh, but, yeah, the first bit will be this comic book. And I just love the artwork so far. It's really high, high, mm-hmm. high quality. A lot of work into it. Inside. What uh, um, do you think we'll get? OK, so is this a monthly release? It will It is monthly. Yeah, they already have the first three okay. covers out. OK, so I'm curious if uh, how many issues are we going to get of the High Republic before we actually get like a novel or anything else from them? Yeah, I want to say the novels are all set for summer, so I think we'll get them okay. pretty soon. I, I think the first novel okay. might be set because they were talking about like mid 2021, everything kind of launching. OK, dang, that'd be neat to actually probably get that one physical, don't you think? You're the first one of the whole new. Oh, yeah. Uh, line of Star Wars in a way. Yeah, that I, that's a good idea to probably pick up a second just for collector's reasons, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, definitely grab hmm. mine. Hmm. Okay. Uh, besides that, probably because the mask, man. They always got badass mask. I always liked them. Uh, yeah. Malick, so Darth far, Revan, I have Oh, Vader. for the Sith, I'm thinking of High Republic. Sith. Yeah. Great yeah. masks. Great sabers. Uh, I've always liked the rule of two, or whatever it's called, where um you have the master and the apprentice. I always liked when that was in place. Um, hmm. it just made for this really cool thing where the, like the apprentice was always trying to kind of portray the master while still being loyal. It's this really cool uh, duality. I liked it a lot. Cool. When the yeah. when the Jedi are neat, but I mean it, it boils down to just like you know, kind of like monk esque, like where they're just like and, and and what's hard about the Jedi is even they don't know what they want half the time. Like if you're talking about like yeah. in the prequels, the one that had had his finger on the pulse the most was probably was probably Yoda, right? Because he was just like there's a disturbance, he knows that the balance. But in the first prequel, the first movie, the episode one. He's even saying like, "Oh, you'll bring back. Ba- we need somebody to balance things out." But it took a while for him to start to realize that, like, yeah, things are imbalanced, but that's because there's a ton of Jedi, there's a ton of light side users. There's not necessarily so. I don't know. To me, it kind of feels like he was the only one that kind of understood that. Like Mace Windu was blind to it. Obi Wan was blind to it. Anakin was confused. Like Anakin in the prequels, as much as I like the prequels, he was kind of a confused kid most of the time. If we were to try to pin it to something. 
I think Yoda was the only one that kind of figured yeah. it out. But one thing too, though, wasn't I'm trying, I'm trying to remember this right, but I should remember because I've seen this multiple times. Anakin was trying to plead his case that something was going wrong in the order, and like yeah, he knew that uh, Palpatine was up to some shit. Um, the Emperor, right? If there I remember was right. a there was a point when he knew that like, hey, Palpatine's a problem, and he like took it up with yeah. them, and then it, it like it was de- de- dismissed. Um, cause yeah, he, he did. They're like, oh, you don't know what shit. That was after that theater scene when they went. They're at the Senate and they're watching like the play, and mm-hmm. he's like. Hey, he's talking about was it Darth Malgus or something like that? He's started kind of like raising alarms, and it was on deaf ears. And then, at a yeah. certain point, and you got to be like, "Hey, the Sith are right." You know, you can't just ignore yeah. your passions. It's like trying to be Vulcan versus Romulan. You can't ignore your passions. You have to control them, but they're there. And and I think a lot of the Jedi things is like you can't fall in love and stuff like that. It's like love might be the reason you're out there for a lot of people. That's yeah. why the great Jedi's, which need to be explored more and aren't in the main the main story at all. Great Jedi's is where it's at. The Cosmic Jedi is where it's at. That's where, I mean, I would love to see a Mando of that. You know, that's what Ahsoka could mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, that's the thing. If if they just listen to Anakin, well, I guess the, the original trilogy would have, would have happened. Yeah, but I wonder if Anakin is always destined to, you know, bring balance to the Force. I wonder if he's always destined to bring down the Jedi. Because he mm. was manifested out of metachlorians let's i hate to use that word it's a bad word amongst star wars um but he was always meant to he was brought in by the force so he was definitely mm-hmm. meant for something if not him his son was you know whatever grandson whatever um yeah so there's something there like whatever he did do was meant to be done is what you got to kind of yeah. look at you know he's kind of weird little infallible thing <laughs> going on with him yeah yeah and you're, you're pro sith assuming Oh yeah, I'm I'm, I'm a okay. cool kid. Yeah, of course I'm sick. Yeah. Yeah. One time, uh, <laughs> I told some I told some little kids that uh, they're all like Jedi fans. I was like, no, nah, no, nah, it's all about the Sith. Forget that. They looked at me like if I was Anakin that walked into their room, their class. Did you have your <laughs> lightsaber with you? That's what I'm wondering. <laughs> so I pulled. No, nah, no. Nah. <laughs> but I pulled that bitch out of my back pocket because I did. <laughs> you know what's funny though? As much as I am pro Sith, like when I uh, uh, when I play Old Republic. Or really, any like Fallout, any game where you have like a light side or dark side, good or bad, I go full on Paladin, man. I'm always like super good, out of my way to protect people. Yet I'm Sith 100. percent I don't know why that is. I don't really know. Maybe it's order over. I don't really know. Yeah. 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 I can see. There's a because it really because when you need to be bad in the game, uh, it really makes you go full bad. Like there's no like, uh, can't you just kind of like punish me a little bit? So I, for me, I have to have that mindset like, oh, shit, you stole some bread from a grocery store. Well, I guess I could cut off your hand, your head. <laughs> yeah, the one game that I went. For it. Yeah, the one game that I tried to do gray, um, it was Red Dead Redemption 2. And the, I, I went in with the mindset like, OK, uh, my version of Arthur is going to be a man who will do anything to protect his family, to protect the, the bank robber clan there. Um, I will do anything to protect them even if it means I have to do things that are a little bit shady, but generally I'll be a good guy. Mm. So there were things I had to do. Like, for example, there's one guy in the be- early in the game anyways, um, that recognizes you from bank robbery. And he's like, I won't tell anybody, I won't tell anybody. You chase him down and you have the option to say, like, don't you tell nobody run out of town and let him go. Or you basically let him fall off the edge of a cliff. I put my mind and said in there saying like, it's not safe to let him go. He will possibly get drunk and tell somebody kill this man. So I killed him. Now, what's funny is at the end, you have two different endings, depending if you were good or bad. I got the bad guy ending because there were some decisions mm-hmm. I had to make that were best for the family that were bad. Um, and then, I, you know, we did the level up with it with Kyle and Kyle did all good stuff. And he got a different ending, which was like, oh, wow, that's like a super sweet ending. Mine was yeah. tragic. <laughs> Mine was the end of Breaking <laughs> Bad. So, um, yeah, it was it was pretty cool. I, I mean, I, both endings were awesome. That game's amazing. And actually, I can't believe I you haven't played it yet. Have- I actually didn't know that game was like that, though, when it comes it, to decisions. It doesn't, like, let you know it's doing that. It's just yeah. the ending. Yeah. Hmm. I'll be down. Yeah, I killed that guy, too, though. Yeah. Um, yeah. Why not? <laughs> hey, you got to do the test for family? He'll, he'll <laughs> <sleep later. laughs> Exactly, right? There's a lot of saloons. You're telling me you're not going to get drunk and get a little loose flipped? Trust me, you will. Oh, yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. yeah, anyway. <laughs> we're pro Sith that we're killing guys. We're killing snitches around here. That's what we got going on. <laughs> Oh uh, shit! Um, all right, so let, Frank, let's get into our main topic today. I'm so in. you could go. Oh, you do it anyway. 
No, I'm saying I'm in it. I'm in. I'm in your main topic okay. right now. Oh my god. Okay. Gotta be faster. Like I I'm just kidding. So uh I'm gonna go back to how far that I've played games, but so um Are you trying to say you I'm go? old? Let's try because to, let's I'm try starting to NES. Order. I'm starting at NES. Okay, I'm gonna start with Super Nintendo. Okay, so you so I'll go okay. first. So We'll try to keep it in order. Yeah. So and yes. The way I did my list that? was when I thought of the system, it's the first game that popped in my head, basically, because that obviously means it's the one I'm tied to the most. Yeah. Yeah. But with the NES was a little bit hard because it was like one more thought. So the first thought was Super Nintendo or Super Mario Brothers, because of course it's classic. I've never played it. I don't yeah. know. To, but my favorite game from the NES that was most iconic to me, Kirby's Adventure. Really, really good. Uh, it had an outer world where you're like going into levels and you come out and you basically go, you're able to move around and go to the next level. Really cool design. It takes maybe two hours to beat, but I mean, I could get that thing down fast. I was really quick with it. Really, really fun. Kirby's Adventure. Now, why is that one? Does it just because it's fun for you that you play it, or is there something that, like, why is that one you hold? Well, I, you I would know, say one of the best things you. about it, and it's the Game Boy game version of it was really fun too, but it didn't have this main feature. Uh, Kirby's able to take powers. Uh, in the Game Boy version, for example, you were able to eat people and stuff like that but you couldn't take their power and in in the nintendo one you could and it was just so cool to try to like save power it's like oh let me go back to this level grab that power because it'd be useful in this next level um if you guys are familiar with the game everybody knows that the holy grail of powers was the ufo power and it was only available in two levels one of the levels it was fleeting i mean like you were literally forced to remove it right away and the second level you you finished as much level as you could with it you were really safe like flying on the sides and stuff like that it lets you fly around and shoot lasers the whole time. It was just super strong. Um, <laughs> and you tried so hard to get that thing to get out of that level so that you could use it in other levels. And it made sure that that power was so strong that you were not going to leave the world. But there's all kinds of cool things. It was just a really good game. Really well designed. Fast paced. Uh, Kirby games come in two modes. They're either floaty and, and casual or they're fast paced and harder. This one was one of the fast paced and harder ones. And quick, fast, fun. Perfect. Really great side scroll. Nice, nice. Okay, great, great. Is there any uh, honorable mentions besides that one? For you? I would say just classic Super or Super Mario Brothers and Super Mario Brothers. 3. Yeah, that's right. Both are really good. Okay, okay. So then there's not. Okay, so next would probably be Super Nintendo. There's nothing yeah. in between for you. Like you didn't play no old school. Well, I have Sega Genesis. Sega. Um, yeah, I think maybe Virtual Boys in between. That. I, I think yeah. once we get into handhelds, I'll go through all the handhelds. I think we probably should one shot those later. Oh yeah, why not? Yeah, okay, yeah. okay. But um, okay. but yeah, I think Super Nintendo is probably the best. There are next. Okay. So Super Nintendo. Okay. I'll start. My game that I always go back to, and I wish I could play this still, is uh, Looney Tunes B-Ball. Okay. Oh, so nice. it's basically Space Jam with your Looney Tunes characters. And I think it was a team of two or three on the court. And you pick your Looney Tunes characters and then you just do some, what do you call it, like uh, those basketball games in the arcade? Oh, goodness. I'm trying to think of what those games are called. Um, NBA Jam. NBA okay, Jam. NBA Jam. Yeah. So it's basically kind of like that feel. You just do crazy stunts and crazy dunks and whatnot. Yeah. And the thing that kind of I hold that dear to me is uh, there was a grocery store where I lived and they had this little tiny section where you let they let you rent games. Uh, so it was like a super, super mini version of a blockbuster Hollywood. Okay. And I have probably went to that grocery store and ordered or what do you call that? Uh, take home that game at least like five times like that yeah. was my game like oh, at yeah. that time i should have just i should have just kept the game should have never returned it to be honest um when i super like looney tunes and i'm a big fan of a space jam so i'm excited excited for the next space jam coming out um but it's just like that little memory attached to it um is you know, why for super nintendo is that's my game yeah that's a good choice you know what would be a really yeah. good future topic is games we remember renting because uh, I don't know about mm. you, but man, back in the day when you used to be able to go to blockbusters, like your parents are doing the responsible thing, finding a movie, and you're over at the video games one just begging, you always picked a game based off the cover, and it could be dog shit. Yeah. I remember very well yeah. this this uh, Sylvester the Cat game I had that I rented mm. it, and it was terrible, but I mean, of course, you know, that might be a fun topic for the future, is like the games you can remember renting and stuff like that. Now, okay, so renting. Did you, if If you rented this game, and in the case came with the book, did you keep the book? The manual. I did not. Did you? Oh fuck! Every single one. What a thief! <laughs> Holy shit! Yeah. Oh wow! I, I would have a drawer stacked with those game manuals. I don't know what it was. I don't know. I oh, just... I I know what it is. It's it's memories. It's, it's thievery. It's it's petty larceny. It's a it's a criminal offense. I, I like to think of it as uh, holding on to those precious moments. 
Yeah, but That's there's moments the next kid's not gonna get. <laughs> the kid should have been faster. Oh, yeah, or what? The kid before me should have took it. <laughs> uh, okay, I did remember keeping one actually. Saints Row, the oh. very first Saints Row, I kept that one because the, it was so. Man, I can't believe I'm remembering this. The Saints Row inner book was actually uh, looked like a detective's folder about the case uh, because mm. you played a guy undercover and it was his undercover booklet and it was like him reporting on the guys that he's in the gang with and it was almost its own story. It was really, really well done. And I was just like, this thing's too cool for some like snot those kids to get it next after me. He's going to ruin it. <laughs> so I kept that. I do remember keeping one of them. Man, I kept it's crazy. I remember that. Yeah. There you go. Um, <clears throat> if I had any honorable, honorable mentions, I was def- definitely Donkey Kong. Um, yeah, I know that's uh, what was the name favorite. of that one. You know which one I'm talking about, right? Yeah, Donkey Kong Country. Now. Yeah, there you go. Uh, Donkey Kong Country. I remember. I still play that on an emulator sometimes. Yeah. Uh, By the yeah, way, we do not yeah. support emulators or ROMs. Please make sure you own the game no. that you're playing. This was a, uh, and this wasn't even me. <laughs> this was a, a friend at work, man. That's what we did on the on the clock. Some kid <laughs> that you might know that is a thief. Yes, yeah, so exactly. <laughs> yeah. yeah, you know, I don't even have his contact information anymore, yeah. so don't ask me. NSA. <laughs> What is your Super Nintendo? Uh, I didn't own a Super Nintendo. So, I'm Sega Genesis after that then. What's that look? Uh, Again, this is an audio medium. You gotta talk. <laughs> that is oh, weird. I, 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 I'm a gen, I was a Sega man once Sega came out. I owned a Game Gear too. So, yeah. So then, uh, so then, did you own, I mean, you own an N64 though, right? Well, I mean, yeah, when the N64 came out, the perfect system of all time, of course, I went yeah, to right. Nintendo again. <laughs> and Sega okay, failed. Okay. But I had a Dreamcast. Well, I didn't put Dreamcast on my list. I had a Dreamcast. Remind me that one. Okay, so let uh, want to move on to Sega Genesis then so we can do that? Yeah, let's do that. Let's do that. Okay. So for Sega Genesis, I had uh Sonic 3. That's the one with Knuckles is the best one. And you know this mm. remember how you used to be able to plug another Sonic on top? Remember that? Mm, no. You no. Able, it might have been might not have been Sega 3 or Sonic 3, but I'm almost positive that it is. You could put the you put the Sonic 3 cartridge in. And you could plug like Sonic Two on top of that, and then you could have Knuckles in Sonic Two. Oh shit! Yeah, super advanced. Um, Dude, Sega was advanced for its time. Because I'm thinking of the Dreamcast, and you have that exactly. little uh, screen that goes in it. Oh, yeah. Okay. Well, Sega came okay. out with a TV that had a Genesis built into it and connected to the internet, so you could play Mortal Kombat with friends online before like the internet kind of thing. You Holy actually had it, a- <laughs> dude. They had Game Pass. You could pay a subscription. And I think people still have like it active or some shit. Like, there's some weird little loophole going on right now, but um, you could pay a subscription to play any Sega Genesis game online. I think it was, and this was again like what '93. I mean, when Al Gore was just yeah. inventing the internet. You know, it was like super <laughs> early. So, but yeah, man, it's oh, man. Sega has always so, been ahead of the game, just too ahead. So of why? Okay, first I want to hear your game, and then we got to talk about a little bit more about Sega. But wh- why, why the Sonic? Oh, uh, Knuckles, Knuckles is just cool, man. He, they took the cool guy, yeah. and they were just like, you know how, like, okay, you know how you got that teen movie? You got the jock mm-hmm. who's like, he's just a cool rad dude. The jock guy, mm-hmm. right? That's Sonic, in my opinion. But then you got that kid that's like, yeah, but I'm too cool to be cool. That was Knuckles. And so Knuckles was like, he's too cool to be cool. And he was hanging out with Sonic, but he's like, yeah, but I know that he's part of this establishment. Like, he was just awesome like that. So. And yeah, he had the ability like to Edward glide. Cullen. Oh, shut yeah. the shit up. <laughs> Definitely he's a Jacob. Are you kidding me? Oh, my God. Oh, goodness, no. You know what Edward uh, is? Tails. That's what Edward is. Tails. Oh, my God. That's fucking pathetic. <laughs> yeah, you're right. He is. Uh, now, why do you think the... De- uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to fucking say it. Why do you think the downfall of Sega? Like, now they're just making games, no consoles. Uh, you know, we could say they're ahead of their time, but it's like, it's, I don't know. What do, yeah. what do you think? I think I think they just, they, they probably didn't have very good marketing or identity or anything like that. Um, I don't know, it's really hard to tell. They actually, I think, made a pretty good move in switching over to giving their characters, giving their games to other consoles because they're able to stay alive. If you look at Atari, who was never able yeah. to really capture that, you know, they could have gone like Atari. Atari was like Apple at one point. I mean, they were the big... As a matter of fact, Steve Jobs and... Uh, and Was it Steve Wozniak? Yeah. Went to... Um, I can't remember his name. Bushnell. He, they went to Bushnell, the guy that, that had uh, Atari, and said, like, hey, do you want to help invest in Apple? And he's like, nah, I, I, Atari's fine. I'm okay. I need to invest your guys' uh, little computer business. And he missed out <laughs> on that. 
Yeah. Damn. He could have been a third part owner of Apple, but he, he said think no. Of, think of if, uh, like Atari, Atari and Apple if they came out with a came up with a deal when they if they partnered up, Ugh. what would Atari would still be um, this massive thing right now? Yeah, and at the time Atari was the same. Someday we need to talk about the history of Atari. I, there's a really good uh, podcast from the Dolph about it. But like, yeah, the guy I liked his policy of like, you can come in high, you can come in late, you can come in wearing every, whatever you want, just get your job done. And like his whole workplace was. They had like the guys from Hewlett Packard, Packard over, and they were racing around in box boxes. They, they like made carts and stuff like that. And he had these executives in it, like pushing around the, the hallways and stuff. Like it was a party okay. house. Yeah, and they were on top of yeah. the world. Yeah, and he still got the job done, right? Yeah, yeah. He had a plane named Hopefully. Pong. <laughs> but yeah, hmm. pretty damn. amazing. Uh, damn. So I, I, you kind of have to speak. I played a little bit of a uh, Sega Dreamcast. So you kind of have to be, if you have any more Sega okay. stuff or whatever you got going on, uh, that's going to um, be all you. Okay, so let's go Dreamcast then. So for the Genesis was Sonic 3. Dream, uh, Dreamcast, I don't have it written down. Um, it was Sonic Adventures, which was like this 3D world kind of game. Uh, you actually like, um, you think, man, how do you explain it? Like he actually was in a city with humans and stuff like that. Is that that's, that's not the one with Shadow, is it? I think Shadow was in it, but I don't think he was like the main character because I know there's also like that's a, big a, cat a Sonic stuff. Adventures. That one is Sonic Adventures too, with Sonic or with Shadow. Okay, then I'm thinking the first, one. but it was really cool. It was okay. just yeah, it kind of gave this like new level to the outer world. It was really neat. Yeah, I like that a lot. Okay, okay. Um, for for Dreamcast with me, I played a little, a uh, few because it was mostly my brother's game. Um, so I I didn't have too much time on it. The ones I remember the most is House of the Dead. Oh, um, uh, and it was, I think it was the same as like playing it in the arcade. Like it was it just the arcade version moved to that. I'm trying to think. It, I think it was like House of the Dead 2. Uh, yeah, I'm pretty, yeah, House of the Dead 2. Yeah, okay. Um, that one, ugh, it's just a blast. Obviously, you just kind of move your cursor and shoot it anywhere. Um, so that one I super loved. Also, I played a lot of Code Veronica Resident Evil on that, uh, on the Sega Dreamcast. Um, uh, I I don't think, I was too young to kind of really understand, like, Resident Evil games, really. Right, right. Uh, right. My first one was Resident Evil 2 on the N64. Uh, but for something like that, I never beat it, but back in the day, we had strategy guides. So I spent that a couple yeah. extra bucks to help beat the game. <laughs> okay. Yeah. yeah. Uh, or when you have to go to store, you go over there to read as much as you can, and then you actually... <laughs> yeah. Try to remember until my dumb ass would be like, oh shit, and you go back to the store. <laughs> or you just tear out the page and you hide it down your pants. I'm just saying that was an awful. Oh, that's a thief. <laughs> well, that's hey, a thief. you were you were a thief first with stealing the st- the guides out of the rental <laughs> games, okay? I'm just saying. Uh, shoot. Neither of our records are clean. Oh man. Um, and then I'm gonna throw out there. Um, uh, there was a scooter game, like a Razor scooter game. What? Uh, I don't I don't remember. Was it racing? This title. Yeah. So basically, you do stunts and you make the tricks, pretty, pretty much like Tony Hawk, but okay. on scooters. Yeah. And uh, I remember like there would be some insane world or levels to to scoot on. That'd be like somewhere in the sky. Um, really? Yeah. I gotta. It's uh, this one is just it popped in my head. Think about Sega Dreamcast. So I don't really like have the title or anything for it. Uh, but definitely that one. Uh, but my all time for sure were House of the Dead Two. I played a lot of House of the Dead Two on Sega Dreamcast. Okay. Yeah. Uh, before we go into more systems, you want to go over the handhelds? Yeah. Um, did you anything before Game Boy for you? No, I would go just. I would start with Game Boy myself. Okay. 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 Um, yeah. Go ahead then. Start with Tiny Tunes on Game Boy. It was four major levels. Mm. Um, really cool. Four worlds. Uh, the music in it. They had like Beethoven in this game. It's really great. And then they had of course classic music from Tiny Tunes and and different Looney Tunes. Uh, just a fun platformer or a, a side-scrolling platformer. Uh, you played as ba- uh, was it ba- Babs? Somebody else? I don't know. The two kids. You played as the two kids. Um, really cool. Okay. It's good. The music I remember being very, very good. What is um? Uh... Okay, okay, okay. I think I know. What... I don't know if I know what you're really talking about. But what was the point? Was it like a side scroll? It was legit, just a side-scrolling adventure. I think I streamed it maybe a year ago. That was before we were affiliated and stuff like that. So maybe I'll stream it again. Actually, uh, it was it was basic and easy and a lot of fun. Some levels yeah. were hard, like the end levels were pretty difficult. But uh, then I, again, I just remember the music so well. I could, you know, 
it's actually the first time I like, who is the guy that made this song? I look it up like, oh, okay, this guy's name is Beethoven. Like, who knew? It's like, you know. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's just really cool. Um, any honorable mentions on the uh, Game Boy? Before so I-, I have I have a Game Boy Color, a Game Boy Advance, and a DS choice. So you tell me when. So, okay, yeah. so let me. I'm gonna. Okay, so Game Boy. Two. I got. I got two of them. Okay. okay. Uh, one of them is uh, Wario Land, Super Mario World, or Super Mario Land. Yeah, yes. they kind of like had to say Wario Land, and then it says Super Mario right under it um, for the title. And that game literally is the thing that was like, okay, Wario is my favorite character of all Nintendo. Like, I gotta have every piece awesome. of Wario. Yeah, I don't know what it's. I really wish they'd do something more with Wario. Like, I wish they would ha- go back and make a Switch game, but of Wario Land. Like, I'm tired of these whole like little. Wario mini games that they have yeah. that they come out with like come on dude this is those games were a blast i love like when he charges up and he charges through like a wall or something yeah just his, his yeah. moves whatever i played the remake of that game i like think power. yeah it was really good too now when you beat a level didn't you have to like go back to the level faster or something like that i think the uh man or is that a different i remember playing one where like you beat the hmm. level and then you had to like because like they let you charge the entire th- or something like that and you had to like run backwards through the level as fast as you can to get through there, something like that. It was it was a I don't blast. Know I remember that? Yeah, I don't I don't know why. I feel like that's such a misopportunity. You know, if they came up with the Warrior Land on the Switch, just straight up and they announced it, that thing. Oh my god, man! My at least for me, my my, my Switch, and we'll get to it once we're at that Switch part. But my Switch is ninety nine percent play just retro games. I don't really play the new games much mm. at all. And yeah, and you know, I'm like, oh, the Super Nintendo one. Give me the NES. I'm freaking there, and you guys give me a Game Boy Advance, Game Boy emulator on the Switch. I will pay whatever I need to to own that library, <laughs> dude. So many great Game Boy games. Just like like that one's a really good example of the Warrior game. Like it's not big, but it's just yeah. really a tight platform. They did a really good job. Yeah, yeah. Um, and I do have to say, I, the, I do have to say this one. This one's a huge one because this is what started it all for me. Um, it's gonna be Pokemon Red. Nice for sure. Um, and the reason why that is because when I was in elementary school, I think way back, uh, I went to a friend's birthday party and it was a, <clears throat> a Pokemon themed birthday party, right. but I never owned the game yet. So I was like, I don't know what this really is, but whatever. I watched some of the cartoons, uh, the episodes <laughs> of the cartoon. I can't so imagine then, a time when you don't know what Pokemon is. <laughs> you know what I'm yeah, saying? Right. <laughs> <laughs> now, when you like come out of the womb, you already know like, Hey. You know, yeah, here's your Pokemon. That's Pikachu. But, yeah. <laughs> um, but we were handed like a, you know, those cardboard card holders, and you put all the cards in it. It's like yeah. just a row of them. Okay, yeah. Um, so we were handed oh. that. Uh, this is for party favors. We were handed that with like a couple uh, uh booster packs of Pokemon. I was like, dude, this is kind of badass. Whatever. Cool, yeah. And everybody had the game, so they let me play. And I think that was the that memory was the start off of me getting a Game Boy, as well as what the heck Pokemon was anyway. Now, shows I, lunchbox I, I i you know pokemon blue was was one of my and, I, and i'll go right to just i'll mention this while we're talking about pokemon uh for my game boy color it's pokemon yellow um mm. the cool thing about pokemon looking back at it is i think it's the first game i took seriously because uh it was the first like rpg i, I never got mm. into zelda and all that link adventures and stuff like that mm. i would say pokemon's the first game that i was like let me invest time in this let me make sure my team is perfect let me go afterwards mm-hmm. and make sure to collect the, everything let me catch it all it was it was the first game where I was like, I need to be best at yeah. this. Not just like this is fun to play. Oh, I'm enjoying this. I'm not a gamer. Um, but I just like playing this video game. And Pokemon was like, I need to be good at this. I think, you know, can you is that sound right to you? For you as well? No, yeah, for sure. And it's so weird that you say that because it's true, because then it's like, okay, well now I'm looking up on how to, where is this Pokemon? And I remember like going through caves in this random ass area on the map that was just in the corner. I remember all that, and it's weird because being that uh, young, I can't think of a a game I took more serious than Pokemon. Yeah, yeah, damn, that's a I think that's, that's a cool thought, one for actually. me too. Yeah, <laughs> that's cool. yeah, that's so much so that okay, just I mean, I know we're going off tangents in here, but that's what the show's about. Um, yeah, the rare candy, you know, where you're able to catch no name or no number, either mm-hmm. one, and you could you can get the multiple rare candies, and then you feed it to one of your Pokemon. I remember so well feeling dirty after using that. Like, like I was, I would like, no, I know you give me that weird look. Um, yeah. Because it was just like, ah, man, now this Pokemon's 99, but you didn't earn it. 
he's not as cool as if I were to level him up to 99. You know what I'm saying? It just felt cheap. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe that's just me. Yeah, that's I'm complete opposite. I'm like, any way to cheat me through anything? Come on, you know me in World of Warcraft. Any way to cheat me through anything, <laughs> yeah. I'm taking it. Anyway, so yeah, after this, I'm going to carry you through what now? <laughs> no, I just, <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Because that's the thing, too. If you guys use rare candies to level up your Pokemon, they will not get the same stats. Like, you'll actually get less stats than if you're to level up naturally. So it was like, yeah, it's 99 in number, but it's actually like 80 in strength. So it wasn't at all, any, at, ever as good. Mm. Okay, okay. Uh, Game Boy Color, you said Pokemon Yellow. Yes. Okay, now what made you feel like that was so much... <clears throat> I'm trying to think of a question. So, to make it different. So, what Pikachu? made you feel like that was the the next gen of Pokemon? Really? Well, I mean, yeah, it was just Pikachu behind you, and it was just the sound was a little bit better. Everything was just a little bit shade better. Uh, they actually didn't jump the graphics up like at all, except for the fact that it was like, oh, this is what we consider color now. Because remember how the Game Boy Color's color was just like, some things are green and some things are blue and some things are red. That was your three options. Yeah. Um, yeah. But yeah, that was kind of the first. That that was cool. That felt like, man, this thing is legit. And I think I was paying attention to the story more in that one when before I was like, I got to catch everything. That one, I was like, Saffron City, here we go. Let's save the day. <laughs> take out Team Rocket, stuff like that. Okay, okay. Now, uh, you could. Was it where you could. Can you take Pikachu out of your party? I'm trying to remember way back then. I think so, and I think he wouldn't follow you if he did. Okay, that makes sense. Yeah, because I, I mean, but that's what that game's about, though. You had so it, why, you? you know, ultimately, why, why, why would you take him out? You know, and I always played that game super inefficiently, so I would make sure that Pikachu knew every awesome thunder move possible, which means that he couldn't yeah. fight something that was immune to lightning. But it doesn't matter; he was a lightning god. That was the idea. And mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. oh, I'm seeing, uh, I'm seeing Takuro join me. Twitter feed. The girl, what's up? All right, sorry. No, oh, nice. News you of the week, we don't could, mention could things. Could be here talking. <laughs> I know. He's, he's got to be on that World of Warcraft. Get that healer some gear, man. I need a healer. Okay. Back on track. <laughs> um, I'm trying to think of color, but when I look back, I always just get, like, I get, uh, you know, confused of which one was color and which one was not. The graphics really. didn't change much. It was uh, just a tint of color. Yeah. I basically yeah, wanted a way to put in Tiny Toons and Pokemon Yellow. I think I think if I um it was a Super Mario mm -hmm. let me look it up real quick. Um it was a Super Mario Deluxe. Deluxe? Yeah. I yeah, that Super Mario that was, Deluxe. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Uh that's the one that I uh could say I remember the most, but I don't really like to me, like I said, regular and color were just a a mixture to me. So yeah. I mean I remember playing a bunch of Pokemon uh yellow um i think silver came out in that time frame too right it did, it did silver yeah. and gold mm -hmm. i played a lot of silver uh lugia was the main pokemon i think yeah on he the was legendary yeah yeah, turn. yeah. yeah. <clears throat> so just Never a real him, quick so. yeah well I'll, I'll show you how it's done yeah. uh real quick <laughs> shout out for for pokemon uh, for super mario deluxe <laughs> daniel gave us the ola there you go um <laughs> a quick shout out for pokemon deluxe is the fact that um not pokemon i'm sorry super mario deluxe is that was the first time the Lost Levels were in the U.S. So the mm -hmm. original sequel to Super Mario Brothers that was released in Japan was a lot like Super Mario Brothers the original, not like the game that we got where we're picking up radishes and stuff like that. No, it looked like the first game, but it was far more difficult. And they thought mm -hmm. it was too difficult to release in the U.S., so they basically took this game with like a, a genie and they changed the character. Um so this one, th that deluxe game, actually had the lost levels in it, and you could try it yourself. And they were far, they were quite difficult. I was on a trip to Portugal for like three months, and that was my game. I had that game the whole time, yeah. burning through batteries, and I think my backpack had a pair of underwear and a ton of double A's, and just <laughs> played the heck out of that game. Classic. God, think about that's what we have to do now. Like, say the next uh, Nintendo Switch, like, oh, you know, we made it convenient for you, just in case you're on an airplane, you don't have a charger. I mean, I guess you bring portable chargers what about, now. Yeah, what about your smartphone? Some batteries. If your smartphone took double A's, could you imagine? Oh, fuck. <laughs> a lot of, there'd be a lot less screen time, that's for sure. But then you'd hear, then uh, fucking Duracell would go fucking skyrocket by those stocks. Oh, yeah, by buying the Duracell stocks. Yeah. <laughs> All right, oh, do you want to do Game Boy Advance and DS now, or do you want to wait on those? Yeah, no, let's do Game Boy Advance, because this one's uh, super fresh in my head, even though this has been so many years ago. Okay, and, and I think we've already mentioned it on the podcast a few times. Mine is Advanced Wars. We have twice. 
I edit all the episodes. <laughs> trust me, we've done it twice. Uh, Advanced Wars, classic game, turn-based strategy movement. It's kind of like Fire Emblem. Fire Emblem basically took it from Advanced Wars, in my opinion. Um, which I think, yeah, I'm not sure. Anyways, it's a perfect game. Uh, really it really good. is, yeah. Yeah. And generally just a good game. Check it out, guys. We have streamed that one a couple times, too. Yeah. And uh, mine, for sure, is Advanced Wars as well. I remember nice. when you introduced Advanced Wars to us, we were uh, camping at Dylan's. Mm-hmm. Beach. Okay, Always so it's beach. just like a beach on the west coast here in the States, California. Um, and you showed me this game and I was like, oh my god, like I want to be the buff guy or the girl or whatever, and you like lead the army. And I remember playing with my see through pink Game Boy Advance. <laughs> I don't know why I got that one, it was different, so I grabbed it. <laughs> um But Advance Wars is the one that's like a uh d- it brings me back to that memory of Dylan's Beach playing with a table set up. Uh and it was a a link, right? Where we played versus well, each other? No, here's the thing. Or no, was it? No, you remember? actually handed the Game Boy off to the next person. That's right. Okay. Which okay. that alone, that and split screen are like relics of the past that the kids will never understand. It was like yeah. you actually had to like, oh, it's your turn, and hand the Game Boy over. Like, dude, what? You had it for seven hours. <laughs> you know. Yeah. yeah. Now I remember, like, oh, you better not have seen my shit. <laughs> That's what oh, I said. Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah, because when you do like the day change, um, and yeah. it was the next person's turn, you had a chance to like, oh, fog of war, you got to see it. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, so mine mine is Advance Wars as well. Which is, yeah. yeah. All right, and then I'll just get my DS one out of the way real quick. Super yeah. Mario, uh, Super Mario for the DS. They basically made a remake of the original side scroller, uh, but they did new graphics. We've seen it so many times already. Super Mario World and stuff like that. They keep doing it over and over again. Uh, but the DS version was like, the DS was a really good system. That one I remember is kind of like the one I'd always have ready to go. Play with, so. Yeah, yeah. No, I remember playing. Um... I think there was a Mario Golf game on that one, but I could yeah. be wrong. Could no, be no, you right? use the bottom to like shoot. Okay, okay. There was Mar- uh, that Mario Golf game, and I, I played that one a lot on a DS. Um, also on DS is there was a the first Kingdom Hearts that they introduced was the oh yeah, it's a good one. Chain of Chain of Memories. If yeah, I'm, I'm thinking right. It's basically. I mean, they remastered that now to you can play on like the PS2 or the consoles. Oh, I don't know. I thought it was still versions in- as well. Uh, and it's the it's the card version of it. Uh, basically, you have to to for you to do an attack, you have to have the card in your deck. But you'll move around like you're playing like Kingdom Hearts one, or, right? And I think yeah, it came up before too. So like Kingdom Hearts one, uh, and I remember playing that a lot too because obviously we'll get into. I mean, I've said it multiple times too. Kingdom Hearts, my favorite game in the whole world. So yeah, yeah. I I think actually the Kingdom Hearts I'm thinking of on mobile that I played was one where you actually fought like normal Kingdom Hearts. And you were, what's his name? You know the, the the heartless. You were like a heartless in training, something like that. I don't. Know. You know the lore better than I do. Uh, but it was fun. It was really good. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. Let's check that. All right. Where are we at now? We are at sixty four time frame, or I think we're at then sixty four. Man, we're back oh. on main consoles. Man. Okay. Okay. Let me. Uh. Let me. Let me hit you with one real quick. So, mine. Oh man, I'm thinking back on a on a Christmas day. Okay. okay, where I thought there was no Santa because I wasn't getting a, a 64. Okay. Next thing you know, Santa was real because I got a 64. Of course, <laughs> Santa is definitely real, yeah. <laughs> what came so, with it? <laughs> what came with it was, and I was I was scared too. Let's see. I was, uh, I was super stoked because I got uh, ready to rumble. Okay. okay, do you remember that game where you're like these wacky ass characters and you fight in a boxing ring? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay, so I got ready to rumble and then the other one hit. Was Resident Evil 2. And I was uh, like, oh yeah. shit, I want to play some Resident Evil 2. And I remember with that corny ass version of it on the N64, so you could change the blood to be like not so realistic, I guess, maybe yeah. for kids or whatever. You could change it to like green or purple. Um, but I r- fucking sucked at that game, being that young player Resident Evil, because all I would yeah. do is start the game over again and be like, oh, I just want to shoot zombies. And like, oh, okay, I don't know which door to go into, or this liquor is beating the shit out of me, whatever. Like, yeah. you know, I didn't really look into whatever um but those are two two that i, I kind of hold dear to me because of those memories um honorable though i mean god it's you go on forever with the with the n64 i could mario party uh mario kart td kong uh racing um uh donkey kong what was that donkey kong it was it just called donkey kong adventure where it was like that whole platform i big, actually i think it was just yeah one? i think it was just called donkey kong 64 a lot of games were called that. They were like Glover 64. Okay. 
I think it was Donkey Kong 64. And that was a good game, actually. That's that's probably my first Donkey Kong game. Yeah. They had good music. It's like, yeah. DK, Donkey Kong. And I like, had a music <laughs> to it. It was freaking good. Yeah. Uh, so those are, okay, so those are mine. Those are my honorable, honorable mentions as well. Now, what would, what, what's your hold here to you? More proof that I talk too much on our podcast. Uh, everybody knows this one's J- Diddy Kong Racing. It was definitely my number one. Yeah. Uh, but let's go into some honorable mentions because the N64 was, man, what a hell of a system, right? Uh, let's talk about, we've got Mario, we've got regular classic Mario, Super Mario 64, great game. Uh, Tony Hawk, I played a lot of Tony Hawk on that system. Yeah. Uh, that game, that system was definitely one where I was always at Blockbuster. It was always at, it was Hollywood Video out by us. Um, yeah. Picking up those games and trying them out. StarCraft came out on that system too. So it was just crazy. Yeah, a lot of good ones. A lot of good ones. But Diddy Kong Racing, yeah. number one. I mean, those were mostly my game manuals that I took from renting games. Or 64 <laughs> games. <laughs> After this, I'm going to win. Now, Diddy Kong Racing. So, Nintendo's probably scared to branch off of uh, Mario Kart. Okay. Yeah. That's it your it big was one. That's a your far better Mario Kart. Like, if Mario Kart took Diddy Kong Racing and just made it their own, I, it would have been my favorite. Mario Kart was a good game, but Diddy Kong Racing actually had levels and in an outer world and uh, planes and hover hover boats and stuff. Like that. One of these days we'll do a yeah. level up about Diddy Kong Racing, um, just yeah. so I can finally put it to bed because I keep bringing it up. I'm sure that the listeners are just like, "Okay, Frank, we get it. You were stuck in the '90s," um, yeah. but it's just it was so well done. And it's if you guys look online, there are fans out there, much like myself, that are just like, "Why is this game not remembered more?" It was legendary. Yeah. And it was. The better Mario Kart, yeah, should have been, should have been. It was brought to the DS later on too, and of course I own that version too. Yeah. <laughs> I wish they would take because because Diddy Kong's obviously not non-existent now. I wish they would take some of those elements like the hover, the hover boats, and the planes and put that into Mario Kart more. Now there are some levels of Mario Kart where you're gliding and shit, but it's not the flying. You know, like there were races yeah. where you're the Jilly on a plane. You're on a plane all the time, yeah. And they had challenges too where you had to like. Uh, transport dinosaur eggs into a volcano. Oh and so it was like gosh, this open yeah. world thing where you're doing that. One of the levels, I mean, we definitely played the most was this one where you're in a, uh, a, a snow or I'm sorry, an ice pyramid. And it was just a battle royale, straight up a battle royale. Yeah. And you're all in cars and stuff like that. We played that thing like crazy and it was just perfect. Great game. I mean, it, it literally had yeah. all the things that this Ma- or, um, Mario Kart should have had. But Yeah. I remember those those uh, delivering of the eggs though. Yeah, that's super funny. Damn. The bonus level from the first yeah. world. Yeah. Why do you? Uh, why do you? What? What? What is it? What do you think Nintendo's doing? They just don't want to branch out to that those characters again because they're not really household names anymore, like, that, like the Luigi and the Mario. Right. That for sure. Secondly, they had a little bit of an issue with licensing on it. So if they bring it back, mm-hmm. it. I when they did bring it back, I think it didn't include Banjo because it had Banjo Kazooie in the game, and it had mm-hmm. um. Conquer's Bad Fur Day, both Rare titles. So if they bring it back, they'll have to talk to Xbox, who now has control of Rare. Um, it's a licensing issue, but it's something that they've already been working together already, so hopefully we get something. Because you want to yeah. see me no life a game, you bring, you bring Diddy Kong Racing on the, spa- on the uh, Switch, and I'll be streaming the shit out of that. Damn. Cool, sure. God, just think of like what they could do with now they graphics do it, too. I know. I know. Damn. Man. Man. Okay. Okay. What do we, are we uh, branching out to PlayStation now? Or, yeah, I guess it would be. Uh, that's, yeah, PS1 is the next one on my list. PS1, okay. Now, you own a PS1? I did own a PS1, and on it I played a lot of Spyro. Spyro 2. Oh, particular. okay. Yeah. Okay, okay. Really good. It, I, it's, again, I, I'm realizing now, going through my list, I'm a big fan of games that have that overworld, the world where you choose what level you want to go into, and you can play around in that. I've always yeah. we talked about this, actually, on the stream. I think it was on the stream. We were talking about, like, what would you do to build the perfect game? And my big thing was I want it to be open world, and I think that might have been like an early version of open world. So that that's weird because I feel like that's a small thing that you super enjoyed because it is just like okay, so Diddy Kong, I'm trying to remember right. All you're doing is just driving to your level, right? So that, each of the it. each of the three main worlds, and then there is actually a fourth hidden one underneath the waterfall, and then there's a fifth one that's in space. Each of those you had to like yeah. you had like an island basically. You were traveling to those areas, and as you went to like example the snow one the music would shift over to jingle bell type music and it would start to snow and stuff like that. And then you go into their room where you could choose a door to go into the actual level. It was, okay. it's not that complicated. And yet I was, no. yeah. And, and all the games are like that. Spyro was the same thing. It's not real complicated overworld, but it did give you this like bigger feel. 
See, I gotta, I gotta, I gotta play that soon because I literally have a Spyro right now for the Switch, and it's under my foot right now, and my on the shelving that I have under this desk. Mm-hmm. Um, but I think I, I tried it a little bit because I know they were really uh, connected into uh, uh, Crash Bandicoot, and that's gonna be one of mine for the PlayStation yeah. One. I mean huge crash fan I, I still own all the crash bandicoots in the ps1 case if my wife hasn't thrown them out on the, on the desk that we have in her she's in her currently watching room. she's currently watching on twitch or on twitter so uh yeah, yeah. sarah please don't think she's, so they're probably already gone now yeah. <laughs> um and i remember like when i opened a case of like crash bandicoot one or two i think maybe it was warp crash bandicoot warp that they had like a what well, was it like a code or a way for you if you're on the start menu if you tie if you press like this passcode on your controller it'll take you to a spyro demo um yeah. i'll look that actually because i have all the cases still so you know i I'll think there was one, one that blows my mind dude there was one in spyro that i think took you to crash racing crash bandicoot racing there you go demo yeah. shit dude oh, well, that's my past man crash mar- uh cross marketing man yeah now um now i don't want to cut you off on your ps1 games but is, is there any uh, honorable just, that Okay. Yeah, okay. just the one because we're we're pushing an hour, so I'm trying to. Yeah. yeah. Oh shit. Yeah. Damn. Mm-hmm. Um. So the quick for me, uh, besides Crash Bandicoot, just huge. Um, another one was uh, I've always watched my older brother play this game, and it kind of spooked me out, but it always made me want to play. It was called Nightmare Creatures. I know I brought it up before in a podcast. Uh, uh, I think it was just watching my older brother play it, and me being in the background, kind of scared, is what brings me to kind of like why I always will always think of this game until my grave of one of my favorite PS1 games. Um, you either pick a guy or a girl, you just kind of run through this level and you could kind of like veer off a little bit. Like here's your road, but you could kind of like maybe expand it. Like here's the sides of the freeway. Yeah. yeah. Um, and it literally is just a bunch of like monsters that kind of just pop out out of the darkness. Uh, they made two of them. I never really played number, number two at all. Uh, but number one for sure. I remember creatures. Yeah. Good yeah, choice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So Sarah says she uh, might have thrown it away. By the way, she says, "What's that?" Uh, Sarah says, "Whoops, maybe I did." Oh, and then she also says, "Squeaks is so cute." That is all. Are you serious, right now? Yeah, she's straight delusional. If she's thinking you're cute. I don't know. No, she's straight delusional. If she fucking threw my shit away. <laughs> <laughs> oh shoot! We got to announce um, more so we get more people watching on the Twitter. I don't know. We don't ever announce we're going to record very well. And then it's just like, oh, surprise! Oh my god. I thought you, aren't you ahead of this? Our schedule is based off of your daughter's nap times, okay? Don't uh, give me none of that. You and know that, that is hard because there's so many times where like I can't let Frank down. Uh, I have to get on tonight, but I am tired as fuck. And I'm <laughs> okay. fine with recording another time. You know my schedule is more flexible than yours. Problem is we're <laughs> trying to tell people like, hey guys, unfortunately, Kyrie had to take a nap. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So we Well, gotta- if, if the wife is watching, then this is for you. Uh, you should watch Kyrie more often during the day and let me have this opportunity to record with Frank at a better time. And I have I'll no opinion on this. my after this recording. I have no opinion <laughs> on this. Yeah, I know you're. <laughs> uh, okay. what, are we what are branching next- uh, we- out to think, Xbox or next- PS2? PS2. Let's go right. We're okay. for it. Yeah. I'll start off because okay. I think it's going to be yours as well. Kingdom Hearts, the first one. Yeah. Yeah. Is yours the first one as well or is it the sequel? Mm, I yeah. don't come on. Can I? Yeah, I can't just say Kingdom Hearts. <laughs> uh, you got to pick one because I have sequels in in a lot of these. Uh, it has to be one. Yeah, it was a start, so yeah. it has to be one. Yeah, it was. Yeah. I mean, okay. Now this is going to be real, real old school. Back in the day, I used to get a magazine, and I want to say it was Game Informer. It might have been Game Informer. Um, Fuck. we were at, we were at Dylan's Beach. And I was telling you, like, hey, Square, the guys that make those Final Fantasy games, they're making a Disney game. Remember when I was telling you about that? We were by the Lost of Landing shop when I was telling you about it. And we just, oh, like, man. started thinking about how, like, cool that would be and stuff. We were trying to imagine what that world would be like. I'm trying to actually find this magazine, because I remember collecting these magazines, too. Uh, I didn't think Game Informer was that old. But besides... <sighs> I think you did tell me about this, though. I'm trying to remember. I remember where we were. We were on the back side. We were parking. Yeah. Because I, I might have been driving the bug then. I, no, maybe not. But we were parking, and we were walking around the back of the Losses Landing little tackle shop. And, yeah. and we were talking about, like, yeah, the guy, Square, the guys from Final Fantasy. Uh, you know, they're making a Disney game. And we were just sitting there thinking, like, 
Are you going to play as Mickey Mouse? How are you going to be as Mickey Mouse with a sword? Like, if we were just I'm letting our imagination <laughs> just run. Um, but yeah, I remember it was just like, oh, what a great idea. Yeah. I think for me, it's just a, um, the first game I really felt this uh, connection to with video game characters. Um, it was like I I truly actually cared about Sora and I cared about uh, Kairi and, and Riku yeah. and uh, <laughs> and uh, uh, I felt like at the same time like these were real people that I couldn't let down if I was trying to save them. Yeah. Um, and on top of that, I'm a huge fucking Disney fan. So at the same time, if if I'm if I really like these uh these new characters that they brought to the world, uh you know, and all those connections that they made with actual Disney characters, and you're like, holy shit. Like, I'm literally talking in front of Winnie the Pooh right now. I remember, I remember what, I had to bring my mom in and be like, you choice. don't believe this shit. <laughs> what a choice of all the characters and Hercules and, and Aladdin. Just, and you're I'm like, just, Winnie the Pooh, oh shit, stop because everything. The, the reason why I said that is I remember when Winnie the Pooh came on, I had a press pause, told my mom, my mom, you need to get your ass over here because literally, look at this video game. Like, I'm talking to Winnie the Pooh and Tigger right now. I know, yeah. I know of all the other characters, but that one is when I brought. My parents like you guys have to get involved in this. <laughs> I'm gonna throw this out real quick too. I gotta get your lights, dude. I like your lighting system over there. Your system's better than yeah. mine. Yeah, and that's not cool. Mine's yeah. like I've got <laughs> shadows, like I'm hiding, like I'm the fan of the opera over here. But yeah. Anyway, so that's an amazing movie. Uh, and um, yeah, music is outstanding. Lindsey Sterling's fan of the opera. Check it out, guys. You're welcome. Uh, <laughs> All right, Game but Cube? I do have some uh, honorable mentions though, real quick. Uh, two big ones when I first got the PS2, uh, and I'm a huge fan of this series too. Is gonna be Double May Cry. Yes, and then oh, yes. Uh, yeah, uh, fucking top three games I've ever played in my life. Double May Cry, and there was a Mobile Suit Gundam Road to Jaburo or something like that. It was a Gundam game, okay. and it was followed the original series of Gundam, and pretty much like the animated series. Like you actually follow that story. That was pretty much it. There wasn't like ex- ex- an expansion to what you saw on the anime. Uh, but I played it tons of Gundam. I was a huge Gundam fan back in the day. I had all tons of toys, uh, for that one. That's my honorable mention right there. So I'm going to throw this out there real quick, man. I would say N64, PlayStation 2, PlayStation 2, and the Xbox 360 had such outstanding lifespans that picking the favorite is, is, is probably the hardest on those ones, right? I think we probably had the biggest collections on those, in my opinion. PS2, I mean, to think of all the games I played on that... Kingdom oh, Hearts stands out, but I mean, it's a long list. That game, you you just went yeah. through them. You just went through them. Man. So yeah, calm. PS2, Remember Xbox so 360? calm. Yeah. 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 Crazy. All right. Uh, um, what's next? What are we at now? Uh, uh, 360. What are we doing? GameCube's next. GameCube. Oh shit, Luigi's Mansion. Luigi's Mansion. Okay. <laughs> that, that's it. That's it for me. I mean, I love the colors. I, uh, I it was. Hmm. Uh, I think that's what it was. I think the first time being not so much like, oh, I'm a huge Luigi fan or anything, but I think it was basically the colors of the ghosts and uh, and uh, attacking them. I played every Luigi's Mansion. I got I got the one just recently. I beat that on the Switch. Uh, I played it on the 3DS. I, I love Luigi's Mansion. You know, you know it, it's so crazy. We're talking about how much we're going to like that Dylan's Beach and camping. Mine is Soul Calibur. And I remember having the mm-hmm. screen where you would attach it to it. Remember we were playing that in your dad's pickup? The TV so- on top of it? Yeah, I remember how it had like a TV that would attach to it? Yeah. We, we, yeah. We played in there because we could plug it into the, the... Man, we played a surprising amount of video games at camping, you know? Yeah. But, yeah. Probably should enjoy the outdoors and stuff like that. We're just like, bring your video games. That's also where we got a lot of our Magic the Gathering and Yu-Gi-Oh games going on, too. Yeah. Which, yeah. Um, I'm going to be... By the way, just a, I keep shouting out other shit, but uh, I'm on the Altered Universe, Alternate Universe podcast often, usually weekly. Uh, He's going to be doing a series pretty soon where we play Pokemon over stream like this. And I'm going to be in for the first first episode for that. So keep an eye out for that, guys. I'll, okay. I'll share it on our socials. I'm going to have to learn how to play Pokemon again <laughs> to be able to do that. I don't know. Yeah. I haven't done that since I was in elementary school, I think. But yeah, I'm excited. You, uh, you brought up the, the card games at Dylan's. And uh, one thing I have to bring up is uh, you got us into this Lord of the Rings card game. Okay, you yeah. You remember that? Oh, yeah. I was oh, wondering if it was going to be that of the Star Wars one, but yeah. Yeah, man, that game... I mean, one thing that I really liked about the game, I mean, it was just you explaining it uh, to us as well. It was just easy to pick up and play. Like, yes. it, it didn't feel like it was really hard to understand. Yeah. Um, yeah, man. Damn. And it was, it was just yeah. straight up images from Lord of the Rings, which I've been, yeah. I've been tinkering around with the idea of what, rewatching a Lord of the Rings maybe in one day. It's 12 hours. I have like, oh, shit. shit, I gotta get done. But, you know, <laughs> I'm thinking about doing that. 
And it's like, man, how do I set the time? I, I remember watching that every year. And now as an adult with like the podcast and, you know, all these other things going on, it's like, where do you find the time to stop and watch a four hour movie? Because of course you got to watch yeah, the sure. uh, unedited. Movie. Yeah. I just don't have the time. I anymore. think, yeah, I think the most I did for Le- uh, Lord of the Rings in one day was just two, just two of them. And uh, I rewatched and that's the Hobbit series pretty quick. Dude, that's like a day yeah. at work doing two of them. Yeah. You know? Yeah. It's pretty good. Yeah. Shit. Anything else for GameCube? Any other sh- any other um, there was a Star Fox game, Star Fox Adventure, I, I think it was, where you're not on the yeah. ship. Yeah. Yeah, you have like a staff and you're trying to save this girl fox. Um, and it's like there were some dinosaurs that you had to kill and shit. This also um, has the best Smash Brothers, in my opinion. I think it was Smash Brothers Melee. Yeah, you know, we didn't even bring up Smash Brothers on the 64. I know. I, yeah. I thought about that afterwards. I was like, well, now wait a minute now. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, I know. I'm getting yelled at for that one. But uh, yeah, because I, I remember the this? Smash. I remember when Smash first came out. There's just I just always think of that commercial when it first came out with those mascots and they're just hitting each other after holding hands. By the uh, way, again, I keep distracting us. That right there, that framed item right behind me. You guys watching the stream? That's the stamps from Kyle, from uh, Kyle X Plays. Framed mm-hmm. them. They're up on our pod wall now. So, <laughs> thanks again, Kyle. Oh uh, shit! Shit. Um, so what a, what a, uh, GameCube for you? Uh, no, other no, other Soul Calibur, oh, just that? Okay. Soul Calibur, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, okay, so what are we at? 360 now? Uh, no, we're on Xbox. We gotta go to the original Xbox. Oh my god, we didn't even talk, holy shit. This, uh, this, this is what god happened. Dang. This is why I bring prepared notes to a podcast. I've got multiple pages out. Like, <laughs> and thinking. you're like, holy shit. Let's free ball it and stuff like that. You gotta be ready, man. No, I'm just kidding. Oh, man. Uh, How would my- I, okay. <laughs> My Xbox uh, One original or an Xbox original game is going to be Xbox. It's going to be Halo Two. Those cores are so interchangeable. Is Halo Two first online experience in a in a console, um, and just trying to you know get up to the read uh, the the boards and get your skins and stuff like that. And it's just really cool game all around, amazing. So, yeah, yeah. Um, I'm gonna say uh, I'm gonna say mine is Hunter the Reckoning. Uh, there was two of them. And the only reason why I know you're like, oh, there's fucking Halo, Max Payne, and all that shit, and you're talking about a game that doesn't even like exist anymore. And that I don't even mind. remember. But yeah, yeah, good. <laughs> yeah. So uh, <laughs> this one because I played a lot with Joey. I, uh, you might have heard of him. He's been on this uh, podcast maybe like a less than a handful. I of believe times. in 2018. <laughs> Just mm, that's, our, that's our first episode. <laughs> um, I played a lot of that with him, and it was cool because it was that local local uh, co-op. So just yeah. You know, don't have to worry about being online or it wasn't even split screen because it was over the over the top view. Mm-hmm. Uh so yeah, there was no worry about splits or whatever. Um uh other than that, a lot of brute force. You remember that one? Oh shit, brute force is great. Yeah, yeah man. Is that the one like with... the big lizard person? The lizard person yeah. or the buff dude or some chicks too? And there was like dude, four that's characters good. and you just go guns blazing. Yeah, that's yeah. a good choice. Man, I haven't yeah. thought about yeah. that game in a long time. Oh man. Wow. All right, 360? Yeah. I gotta go. Now, this was hard, because, again, it's it's one of those, it's just like the lifespan of that thing's insane. Crackdown, you got Crackdown in there. You got Call of Duties. That's when Call of Duty heyday right there was all 360. So, so many really great games. But I went with Oblivion, Elder Scrolls Oblivion. Um, talk about a game I've replayed. I, I think I've replayed it like seven times. I, I honestly think it's better than Skyrim, in my opinion. Uh voice acting you had patrick stewart you're talking about jean-luc picard was in that game you had sean bean you're talking about ned stark yeah had some outstanding voice acting in that game uh all around badass game. yeah yeah um that's cool but they'll never make it again they don't need to make it again they nailed it already what would you, i don't need them to remake they it should, but but why it's been okay so everybody likes fallout uh, what what else are they doing besides Fallout? That's uh, Skyrim. Skyrim. They're, they're uh, making one more too, think, like Stellaris. Do you think um this can be a push because mm-hmm. Xbox is now like fully with Bethesda? Um, that Oblivion would be the one, the next maybe besides Skyrim. Well, they're already working on Elder Scrolls Six. Are you talking about like a for a remake? Well, not so much for a remake, but will you think they'll ever revisit uh, the Oblivion world? They've always been so they're all in the same world. They're all in. Well, okay. Yeah. Yeah. What do you mean? I just I think because what I remember of Oblivion, uh, was you start off in the beginning and you're like in this portal. Isn't the story very different than Skyrim or no? 
Well, yeah, the story's different. So the the story of it is that basically like a dreadlord is opening up portals all throughout. Yeah. You know, Tyrion, I think you're in the center. You're near the capital the whole time. And and so you're closing down portals and stuff like that. It's basically that. You're just trying to stop this demon. And eventually he does actually get through. And you're having to fight him in the city. It was just amazing final boss battle. Um, yeah. Yeah, it was really cool. But And then, of course, Skyrim was all about the dragons in the north. It's in a different region. You're right there. Uh, and mm-hmm. in ESO, Elder Scrolls Online, kind of took place in both areas uh, at a different time. Yeah. yeah. I think that game was just too... Uh, I don't want to say I was too young for it, but it just never caught my attention. I played a little bit of it. And I, like I said, I remember the four-door ordeal. But I never really gave it that chance. And it wasn't really until Fallout 3 that I gave those games an opportunity. Um, to where, okay, I'm going to sit down, have my bag of chips, my liter of soda, and really just, like, take it all in. It uh, because I think those games favorites. definitely need it. I think what? those games definitely need that time. Hey, you definitely were too young for it, because it's one of John's favorites, and he's a little bit younger than you. And yeah, so, no. I mean, that show shows, you know, yeah, that wasn't... wasn't just interest. interest. Different interest. Probably, probably. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but, uh, I think my game, though, for 360... Uh, it's not even a thing. It's pretty much fucking my top three series of video games. Period is uh, Gears of War. Uh, love yeah. the story. I remember I got in every collector's edition of Gears of War. Uh, that's been made except for four because I think by that time you get older and you're like, okay, well, I don't really need to spend three hundred dollars this time on this video game. So yeah. Back then, when you don't really have bills and didn't give a shit, you're like, okay. Even though I already own Gears of War, I don't have this really cool tin can for it though. So I need to buy that edition. <laughs> yeah. Um. Uh. I love the story. Love the characters. Um. Super fun game where the whole like duck cover, cover shooting uh type of video game. Third person. I love third person over first person usually. Um. Yeah. Gears of War. That's my thing. It's one game that I like first started reading, uh, books for novels for that came out for it. Um, yeah. Yeah. I just really love that universe. I, I got to throw in one more that might actually outdo Oblivion, surprisingly. I just totally forgot about it because it's been around for 115 years. Uh, <laughs> Grand Theft Auto V has been around. It was on the 360, the Xbox One, and the Series X. Grand Theft Auto V. I Holy remember. Shit. Grand Theft yeah. Auto V was 360? Oh, I know. Yeah, yeah. I remember it coming oh out goodness. and me thinking like, oh, man, I could wait eventually to put on the Xbox One. But I was like, I cannot wait to play a Grand Theft Auto. So I picked it up. The story was super engaging. I love Mike. He's my favorite one. I do a level about Grand Theft Auto now. I'm thinking about it. Yeah. Um, it was just so fantastic. And it's one of those games where I have bought it every time they release it on something new. I always buy it again. I haven't bought it on the new system yet, but as soon as they release a upgraded version for the PS5, I'm going to be a sucker by it. I played that one through probably about five times as well. So it, yeah. it's not necessarily probably not beating out Oblivion because Oblivion's good memories, but man, if it ain't tied with it. And I can't believe it's been alive for so long. Props to Rockstar on a great quality what? game. It's so crazy because it's a. Um, uh, there was. We just saw a commercial for our new uh, um, online DLC or whatever, the next thing that they have online. Yeah. It's uh, a casino for that thing. game. Yeah. And I'm just like, how is this still. I'm just like, how is this still going? I mean, do they have a team that's just for Grand Theft Auto 5? But does that team have to work on Grand Theft Auto 6 at the same time? Why don't we focus more on six if that's what it is? Or maybe you do just have a solid little team just for a five while six is being worked on. It's because Grand Theft Auto Online is fucking raking in cash, bro. It's really? so much money being made by Grand Theft Auto Online because you could buy the money or whatever. So mm-hmm. Grand Theft Auto Online is why that game has lasted three generations and why it is Damn. not going to stop anytime soon. There's two, I mean, it, And Red Dead Redemption, too. They just released Red Dead Redemption Online as a standalone game. And I mean, it's it's outstanding. Red Dead Redemption 2 just won, and it's on my feature list. Yeah. Just won Game of the Year from Steam. And it came out in 2018. But when it released on PC, it took over the PC again. It's just that, I mean, Rockstar, guys, they're fantastic. Damn, that's crazy. I need to give that game a chance. Uh, I remember I got pretty bored yes. with it. That's just. Or a simulator. Oh, my God. <laughs> you gotta. Okay, hold on. Nah. You can't look at it as a horse simulator. You gotta look at it as you're going into a new world. So the horse riding thing needs to not necessarily be like, oh, this is just a slow way of traveling. It needs to be more like, I'm a cowboy, I'm on the open range. You got to kind of like fall into the world. That's the hard part with Red Day. Yeah. If you don't do that, you're just going to be like, oh, this takes a long time to do everything. But if you're like, I'm in this for a 10 season series kind of thing like that, oh, that, that game will freaking take. How long are the episodes in the 10 series? 10, 
season series. Yeah, we're talking one hour each. We're talking oh, maybe that's sixteen. Hard. We're talking Walking Dead, but good. Oh god. <laughs> no, it's we're it's fantastic. Slow episodes. <laughs> it actually, uh, if you kind of want to get a little bit of feel for the first few hours, Jablinski Games, which is the Jack Black's gaming channel, uh, he's playing it very slow. He's taken a year to get. I think he said under twenty percent done. Um, he, but he plays that's very, very slow. slow. Yeah, yeah. Uh, he just did his year end review. It was funny. Um, but yeah, he's kind of playing. You can kind of see his reaction to stuff. It's really cool. Yeah, I know if I could get into the world of uh, Death Stranding, I could definitely survive in the world of uh, Red Dead. I don't, th- I don't know. If there, I think I haven't played Death Stranding yet. I will this year. I still think that Red Dead is probably a more uh, grandiose endeavor. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Okay. I like that. Okay. Um, I think real quick before we move on to 360, I just want to say Fable 2. Joey got me into Fable. Fable 1, yeah. It was on on yeah. the Xbox. Should have mentioned that one. Shit. Yeah. I never played Fable 1. Well, I actually played it after Fable 2. And I was like, man, this is this game is just amazing. I remember like the same thing, be good or bad. These crazy ass decisions you have to do to be bad. But I just whatever it took for me to grow those horns out of my head, I did. New Fable on the horizon too. Can't wait. That, that might that. Do you know if that one's gonna be on PC? Oh, there's no doubt. Xbox is thing. Xbox has evolved past their consoles. They're just releasing it. I think to because consoles. Yeah. Okay. And the only reason why I say that because I think Fable, the new Fable, would be one that I would at least get an Xbox. What's the smaller one? Series. Series S. S. Yeah, that'd be the one. Like I would buy an Xbox for that. Yeah. So I'll probably still play it on the PC because once you go PC, it's hard to. It's funny because right yeah. around, I think, right around the end of 360, I became a PC player, or like you know, in the 360 age, I became a PC player. And it's amazing how the rest of these games are, yeah, games I played a lot, but not as much as I did the games before. Because we're not doing a PC list, which is just like, talk about games you put some freaking hours in, you know what I'm saying? So. Yeah. I got you. I got you. We, uh, okay, so next, 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 next. What do we, what do we... 360. PS3? Or, uh, I'm sorry, yeah, PS3. PS3, okay. So I'm going to uh, throw mine out there real quick. Uh, mine is God of War 3. God of War 3 is fucking beautiful. Yeah. Uh, I've been that game at least four times. Uh, that was the one where it's like, it was just back to back to back gods. And it was like, man, I am getting, well, learning a lot just in this video game too about Greek mythology really and what these gods were pretty much about. Um, uh, but man, it is like <sighs> this game and speaking of the new God of War as well, this game literally makes each of the, like makes you want to know more about these gods uh, and learn them because they just like fucking capitalize on the, the powers of them, the, the, the imagery of them. Yeah. They're just so dope. Uh, the opening scene for me, God of War 3, when you're in the ocean fighting Poseidon and it's just big ass monster of him. He's doing like these horses and these crab things and with the water. Um, I think that's more um, just, I even bought it, the remastered version on the PS4 just to play the game. So I've beaten that game multiple times. Yeah. Uh, that's my huge one. I think, uh, on that, um, last of us, the first one came out. That's, that's definitely an honorable mention. That was, I mean, I had a way better time playing the first one than I did the second one. So I don't know. A lot of people don't mind be- agree with me on that one. Um, I mean, real quick too, that was the first red dead. I enjoyed the, actually the first red dead. I enjoyed that one quite a bit. Um, I know, right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um and uh uh also too is uh oh goodness gracious. The Uncharted series. I mean we had Tomb Raider come back and that was one I didn't really mention on the PS1 days is I was huge in a Tomb Raider. Um Yeah, yeah, I think that's it. Yeah. Tom Holland is uh as um uh, what's his name? Drake, right? You think it's gonna be yeah. any good? Um I watched Okay, so I watched Tom Holland and Netflix a movie with the uh, Scars Guard, so and good. Robert Pattinson. Oh man, pretty good. Pattinson yeah. also, boy, in that movie, holy yeah. cow! You you yeah. paid him at a certain point. Yeah, <laughs> he did a great job. So that gives me hope because it, we're obviously seeing more uh, an expansion of Tom Holland in, instead of just this uh, high school kid playing Spider Man. Um, so that gives me hope. But I was kind of expecting like an older Nathan Drake, really not. So that's kind of what I was thinking too. I was thinking more Matt Fillion or whatever, uh, an older man yeah. than him. So mm-hmm. it'll take some getting used to. But I'm looking no, for a 
Yeah. Uh, for PS3, I'm going to go with Ratchet and Clank. I did not play my PS3 much, and I'm having mm. this weird thing where I'm like, did I play Last of Us Part 1, or did I just watch walkthroughs? I don't freaking remember if I actually played it or not. I, I keep going back and forth mm. on that. So I'm going to be playing it again on the PS5 at some point, the remastered one. But man, I'm, I'm like, shit, did I play that? I don't remember. So I'll play yeah. it again, and I'll let you know if I played it before. <laughs> Now, with Ratchet, uh, Ratchet and Clank, though, real quick, uh, so since you brought up movies, did you know Ratchet and Clank was having their own movie, right? They already had, I thought it already released. Oh, did it already release? Oh, I think I it went, know. yeah, I think it released and just fizzled out. No, due to COVID. Google's, it was delayed, no? No, I think it was before COVID, dude. I think it came out, like, in 2019. What? 2018, 2019. I'll Google it. Holy you go, you keep talking, yeah, I'll search it. Ho- holy shit, if that was the case, that's, that's insane, because I remember seeing the trailer for it, uh... And then I don't really really remember anything more than that. What the fuck? Came out huh. April 29th, 2016. Holy yes. shit. Oh my gosh. How, what the? Uh, does it say where, how I can watch the movie? Probably just at the local block. Oh, okay, not the local block. Wait, because that's, it's old now. <laughs> I put it up on the stream so you guys can see it. That's the cover of it. What the fuck? Yeah, I how remember the trailers for it. just falling off. What the fuck? I got to figure out how to watch this thing then. Dude, it's like... It's got to be on some streaming service. I think it's because it's made by the same team that made, like, Escape from Planet Earth and Monsters vs. Aliens and all those, like, half duds, you know? Mm. <clears throat> yeah. Wow. That's just it. It okay. just came out well, in 2016 and that's it. Yeah, it had a decent team, though. But yeah, so. Damn. Okay. I'll be checking that out then. Sure. Might as well. Any uh, movie that you would want to see from a video game franchise? Well, Sony, that's something we're going to be talking on News of the Week. Uh, Sony's actually yeah. developing like 16 projects in total with TV shows and movies. Yeah. So we'll have, uh, we'll have an option to see a lot. I'd like to see a God of War. Bring me a God of War movie. Yeah, that'd be neat. That'd be neat. Um, yeah, I think mine would be Dead Space. Uh, huge Dead Space fan. And that's maybe the like, one on the PS3 as well. Dead Space 2 particularly. Yeah. Um, I think I would love to see that kind of horror. Different, different, different take on... Uh, like a space horror in a way mm-hmm. for the fact that the way you have to kill these monsters are different, but we've, we've seen the animated movies and you know, okay, whatever, but I'm talking about live action now. Live action. Um, yeah, totally. Yeah, totally. Um, sweet. Uh, now we're on like just last generation, right? Xbox. Well, and, uh... we have the Wii. I have Wii tennis as mine. <laughs> so I'm basically ready to skip. <laughs> I'm going to say uh, Marvel ultimate Alliance. That's the first time I played it and that's about it. Yeah. Good choice. Really good choice, yeah. Yeah, I played it on the Xbox, I think, but it's still good. Yeah. Okay, so, uh, Xbox, uh, one. X? Can we just do that? Whatever. Xbox whatever. One. That's one, Xbox, whatever this one is now. Yeah. Last one. Uh, mine's Rise. I've been in that game oh, so many Oh, launch title. Wow, that's a launch title. Yeah, I yeah. never played it yet. Yeah. But that company, uh, they said they're going to be making another Rise, so they're going to Rise again. I fucking hope so i've beaten the shit out of that game i love the combat i love how gruesome it was love how beautiful it was um god dang like i love everything about that game i love how linear it was it was just a quick like wasn't have to be a hope that hopefully they don't turn it into an open world i know like games like the fucking be open world nowadays on everything don't tell me that it is <laughs> if i say weird i don't know like it, it was just they're just starting i just like how it was like kind of semi straight through um how many hours is it Oh god, I can't see it more than is it around ten to fifteen? I think that's that's a good yeah. that's a good amount that's a good amount to enjoy my story yeah. and yeah that's a good amount I like that yeah yeah uh for you uh okay well like I haven't really talked about it a lot Red Dead Redemption two best game yeah. twenty eighteen for Xbox One uh Xbox had a pretty decent lifespan but uh I was thick into the PC during most of it, but I'll, I'll give it for it's like destiny was really good on, on the Xbox. I never played a lot of that. So it was division. Yeah. All open world games. Uh, but red dead redemption two, man, that game was just, just freaking amazing. So I mean, we've talked about it a lot. We've already done a level up, so I won't go too much farther into it, but fantastic game. Totally the best thing. Okay. Okay. Um, okay. I'm trying to go because I know we've been, Kind of long, just an jam, hour and twenty four minutes. I'm gonna say. And what was your? I remember. I remember what we were first pitching the show. Your pitch was, "Oh, it'll be thirty minutes." We're at, we're longer than most episodes we ever do. We're at an hour and twenty four. Oh my goodness gracious! Okay, well, this is the first episode. 
We're going to come back to the table and kind of like fix Unless whatever. you guys like it long. Sure. Okay, I'm going to throw this out real quick <laughs> while we're in this. I think it's important that especially for this particular show, we get audience involvement. So if you guys want to have any comments yeah. or maybe we could throw up a question at the end of this thing and get like people's responses and then you could visit them. Yeah. You know, it's up to you. Whatever, but. I, yeah, yeah, I think that'd be fun. I think that's cool. So if you guys like them long like this, shit, it's easy to talk. I mean, that's we both have a gift of yeah. gab. So yeah. <laughs> now that's something that I was thinking about saying. Uh, I forgot to mention in the beginning, but I was in my head thinking about the whole time that we need to plug this in at the end. Is that it needs to be audience engagement, or I would like to see that. Uh, I want to know what other people's like their game of that specific generation that they remember the most, that they love the most. Um, tell us because even it might be, you might find. You might mention one that's like, holy shit, you're right. Didn't even think about this one. Uh, I'm sure there's plenty that we missed. Uh, why not? If you say that, hey, Frank's picks all suck, and I don't understand why he even enjoys any of those games, let him know. You'd be wrong, <laughs> but go ahead and feel free to mention it. So Hooked on Montana actually just mentioned in the in the Twitch stream here uh, what people responded. So let's go with one right now real quick off the top of your head. Uh, what is your mm-hmm. favorite? What is the earliest game that you remember being your favorite? I think that's a good one for our initial. Oh, Damn, Basically, you and me one. just answered uh, that, right? Is that first? Yeah. What's your earliest favorite game? Hooked on Montana. Go ahead and give us your answer while, while Squeaks figures it out for himself. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to say earliest favorite game. Besides, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to throw something different out there. Besides yeah. Looney Tunes B-Ball, I'm, there was this WrestleMania game. Okay. And I, I, I don't remember which one. I know there was a lot back in the days with the Super Nintendo. Um. But I played a ton of this WrestleMania game on Super Nintendo. Oh, man. I wish I could remember which one it was. Um, It had, like, the... There was, like... I remember some characters. Besides, like, Hulk Hogan, there was, like, these twin brothers that painted their face. I don't... I don't remember. (laughs) These... This is way back when, so... uh, Let's just say one of the wrestling games. What about you? Earliest ones you can remember? Uh, Just Super Mario Brothers. I remember uh, playing that a lot with uh, David and stuff like that. Lots of games. But yeah, so what yeah, we'll do yeah. is uh, we'll hit up people on um, Twitter and stuff like that. And then so next week, if you want to revisit this with whomever's on and then read okay. off some of the Twitter response, I think that'd be kind of fun. It's up to you, of course, but I think that'd be a lot no. of fun, man. I think that's a good if way to get people involved. Yeah, if we're if we're getting like uh, responses and maybe we missed them after, we could start off with like, hey, this is what we talked about uh, uh, last episode and get the, we'll respond to these people on the beginning of each next uh, each of the next episodes. How hooked Montana. Hooked on Montana just has a great response here. Guys, it's Hooked on Montana from Switch. Uh, earliest favorite game would have to be Mario All-Stars on a Super Nintendo. Now, I had a buddy, Jeremy. I used to go to his house and play this one all the time. Uh, I know it's multiple games, but that's the cart uh, that got used to the most. So, um, yeah, it had like, I think it had like kind of like a remaster version of a couple of them, if I'm not mistaken. Because I remember going over to my friend's house and we were just like, oh, like fire. Just like, which one do you want to do? Which one do you want to do? We're jumping around a bunch. That's yeah. a good choice right there. Yeah. Yeah. Very good, very good. All right, so uh, we'll remind people at the end of that to to respond on the Twitter. Those two. All right, where are we at? Are we on Xbox One still? No, we're moving to. Uh, no, I think we finished. Uh, PS4. Let's go to PS4 then. Okay. Uh, PS4. I'm gonna go with uh, also another launch title, and uh, this one got super bad reviews. It tanked. Uh, not enough gameplay. It was more of cutscenes. Um, but I fucking love this universe. Now I'm gonna go the Order 1886. Uh, oh, I, okay. I thought you were talking about yeah. Kingdom Hearts 3. I was going to talk about how I returned it, but yeah. <laughs> Why? Can't, you can't just shake your head. This is a podcast. People can't my, hear your my head My quietness shake. should be the disappointment. Like, you can feel my quiet. If you can, you can, You've been yeah, doing podcasts since 2018. You're a veteran now at this point, good sir. <laughs> um, but I, you know so, what? So, uh, Did you watch the Netflix show that was very, very, very lightly based off that? 1886? Yeah. No, what's the Netflix show? It's a show called, I think it's called 1886 as well. And it's supposed to be like about a group that fights Wolverine or or werewolves or whatever. Not Wolverine, werewolves or whatever. (laughs) But I I looked it up and they're like, it's not based off the game, but it's like loosely in that same world. No way. I'm going to check this out. Because I wish there was more to this world. Now, unfortunately, yes. This was my, okay, this was my first game ever that I've gotten every single trophy for too. Like, I only have one platinum trophy. We're getting all the achievements, and this is the one. Um, probably because it's kind of easy, but you got to do, like, you know, certain tricks. But um, it was a straight-through game. 
Unfortunately, there was tons of cutscenes. Even like, hey, I need to move this fucking plywood that's in the middle of the road. Mm-hmm. Oh well, when I press X, let it be a cutscene. Why can't I just move it? Like, if I'm playing Gears of War, just like chainsaw that bitch, you know, and keep right. going. Yes. Now there has to be a cutscene for it. Um, but I love the story. Love the characters. Steampunk London, I think, if I remember. It was right. London. Yeah, it was Victoria. Um, I think it was like late the- Victorian London. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, the- unfortunately, the werewolf battles were always the same. Uh, nothing new. Uh, the gunfights were pretty fun, though. Um, I still have the game because I have the Steel Edition, Steel Book Edition for it. Steel Case, yeah, whatever. Yeah. Uh, for it, stickers are still in there. Um, I think I I wish there was books of this. I'm gonna check out the Netflix thing that you just mentioned. I'll probably do that before I lay down. Uh, because anything that's like this, I want more of. And it really leaves it. It really ends with a number two, but but how bad it did, I don't think that we'll ever see number two. Unfortunately. Yeah. Yeah. PS4 for you? Yeah, uh for me I never had a PS4. And so oh. I was Xbox loyalist, was Xbox till I die with the green for the Xbox, you know, we know of course for the room today. <laughs> um we'll change it over to blue and resp- as to my new console. But um Oh no, it's not turning there it is. Now it's blue. Nice. Um, <laughs> nice. The blue's my favorite one. Uh but yeah. Also, by the way, hooked on Montana just mentioned on the order eighteen eighty six. He's never played it, but he heard it's incredibly mediocre. Um, yeah, in every possible way, and it kind of seems like it was kind of the the general response it was. to it. So yeah, a lot of potential it though, because it looks cool. Though. Yeah, I mean, it was, and and this is what we're talking about now is just the games that really hit us uh, pretty hard. It was. It's not a game that I'm recommending to anybody unless you know whatever you just want to check out. But I love the world, and uh, that's what made me keep. I'd probably beat it like three or four times. Is the story yeah. good? Is it worth watching a walkthrough on on YouTube? Oh yeah, oh 100. Okay. Oh, yeah, which is a really good way to. Great. Ex- yeah, there's some games that, you know, we have to kind of like, uh, you know, with what we do with the articles and stuff like that, it's important that we kind of know the story of some games that were that are like real big, but we just don't have the time. Watch yeah. walkthroughs, guys. It's a good way to get to the story. So, um, yeah. yeah, that's it, too. Uh, okay, so let's move on to the current consoles then. PS5. Yeah. And X- Oh, the Nintendo Switch. For me, it's Smash Bros. Oh, yeah. Um, damn. I'm playing so many games right now. Um. I mostly play retro uh, games on it, so it's hard for me to pick a new yeah, one. Yeah, see, like, see, yeah, I'm totally opposite with that. I have all the games right now. I have games that I haven't even opened yet, uh, like Paper Mario and yeah. uh, uh, one of the Zelda games, the little cutesy one, Link Before. Oh, that uh, one looks good, actually. I think I'm going to pick that up. Yeah. I just got that uh, triple, the, the 3D triple pack thing. I just got that, too, so I'm going to play that. Again. Yeah, I'm in the middle of that, playing Sunshine right now. Um, I'm looking forward to Galaxy. Um, yeah, you know, I never played Sunshine. And I never played so Galaxy. That's why, that's I'm, why I'm, like, yeah. I'm excited for that, too, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, Switch games. Uh, I'm a big Splatoon fan. Splatoon you are a big Splatoon fan, which is so odd. I've never heard of that before, except yeah, for you. Yeah, I, I don't know what it is. I think when Nintendo really makes a new IP, that they they can nail it. I just wish they had more of it. Oh, they know us, man. They know us. Yeah. Um. Yeah, I, I like to play. It's funny because I know I haven't owned a Super Nintendo, so it's kind of my chance to experience a lot of Super Nintendo games. So I am playing a lot of the the Super Mario World and stuff like that. I'm playing that Switch right now. Yeah. Yeah. Really good. Um, okay. Let's go on to the PS5 then, man. Uh, I'm going to go with Spider-Man Miles Morales. It's flawless. It's just a perfect game. <laughs> I'm, I'm super enjoying it. And um, I have not beat it. And the reason I haven't beat it yet is because I'm the kind of guy that's like, I'm like answering all the calls on the phone. I'm not doing the main mission very much when I'm out there just like, I'm saving cats and stuff like that all the time. So. Yeah. And I agree. And I'm going to go with Miles Morales also. And, the fr- and also because it's, the one new PS5 game that's actually working properly. So I know you've heard me yeah. complain before, oh, yeah. like, okay, I'm playing Godfall, frame rate drops, uh, Valhalla. Okay, I'm getting uh, bugs in when I do a raid. Okay. Um, Sackboy is really good. I really like mm-hmm. Sackboy's Big Adventure, uh, playing that with the wife. Um, I'm trying to think of the next. Uh... Yeah, I think that's it. Yeah. 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 Uh, Series X and stuff like that. We don't. We, uh, Sammy's the one that's playing that for us, and um, I think the only uh, one game that probably we should shout out is we literally just released the level up for that to this morning. Um, is Sea of Thieves? We played that a lot on, and it's we played on the PC, but it did release on Xbox One, and you can't play it on the Series X. So I just kind of give that a quick shout out too, and a plug for the other yeah. show <laughs> that we have. Yeah, um, it released. By the way, guys, all the new shows we have coming out for 2020 because we have News of the Week, we have Push to Talk. That's this show. We have Level Up, which is something that, you know, of course, we brought back from the old days. We have two more shows coming up later this year 
all those will be on this feed. You don't need to subscribe to anything else. It's just stay with Geek Freaks and it will be labeled differently. So you don't have to keep subbing to multiple podcasts. I know that's annoying. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah. Anything else you want out of the PS5 or the Xbox Series X? Um, yeah, no. Uh, all the games as of right now. Yeah. Not too many to really talk about. Cool. Yeah. Yeah. Well, all right. I think that wraps it up for everything, right? I'm good. I'm good when you are, man. I yeah. Think all right. I, yeah. I, I, I can't think of if we're missing a, if we're missing Freaking. a generation or any console that anybody wants to bring up. I mean, throw it at us and we'll uh, we'll definitely go back and talk about it. Why not? If there's anybody, we would love to answer questions on the next episode. Totally. Like, why not start yeah. it off that way? Really good choice for the first one because I just enjoyed going back to all those games that I loved back in the past. Yeah, that was a good yeah. choice for that first one. Yeah, thanks, thanks. That's all all up here in the red in the head. Sorry, yeah. podcast. I can't be just pointing at my head. <laughs> yeah, at first everybody was saying like, "Is he meaning in his shoulder?" Then you had to clarify in his head. <laughs> yeah. um, oh shit! Yeah, it's good. Uh, real quick though, just uh, just to kind of intervene, we you know we took this week off to, uh, from the news of the week show. Uh, that'll be coming up next week, and then this one will this one will be coming out the same week as that one, I think. Um, no. And then and then yeah, we're gonna be streaming CFTs throughout the rest of this week, uh, starting uh, tomorrow. We're gonna be doing some more CFTs and stuff like that. So yeah. just wanted to kind of do what's going on with yeah. and stuff like that. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, definitely. All right, that's it. Then that's it for me. That's it for you. That's it for me. All right. Well, I hope everyone enjoyed our new show. Uh, this is our first episode, clearly, like we said before. So I'm hoping, you know, yeah, take off from there. Let us know what you want us to talk about. We can also do that as well. And a reminder, we're going to we'll put out a tweet to kind of like ask everybody, but just a reminder. Uh, what's your earliest uh, favorite game? So we'll, we'll, we'll do that. Put that on Twitter so everybody can respond to that. You can do it next week. And then, yeah, thanks for hanging out with us on Twitch and Twitter, yeah. guys. Appreciate it. That's it. We'll see you guys next week. Have a good one now. Bye.